In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about polar bonds and non-polar bonds. So first of all, I'm going to talk about non-polar bonds. So if we were to consider a, a diatomic molecule which involved uh, two atoms, which were basically the same atom and therefore had uh, equal electronegativity, so maybe, uh, maybe two fluorine atoms. So that would have the formula F2. And fluorine is usually like maybe yellow or something. I'll just use this light thing. F2. And so if we had two of these and we actually showed a bond between them, we're using a bond, well, not exactly dot and cross notation, but using representing the bond as a line rather than overlapping circles. So if, if I represent it as a line like this. So two fluorines are bonded together. Now I need to draw on the bonded elect, bonding electrons. So I'll use blue and red for this. So at the top, we're going to have the, the first one, the X. And what happens is, since there's no difference in electronegativity between these two atoms, the atoms are going to be midway, on average, they're going to be found midway through this uh, bond. They're going to be equally shared. Uh, yeah. So we've got the dot and the cross. cross. And what this means is that there's going to be an equal distribution of electronegativity um, um, between these two atoms. And because there's an equal distribution of electronegativity between these atoms, uh, none of these atoms are going to be like have a slight charge or anything. There's not going to be a difference in charge between these two atoms. And so we can say that this uh, particular bond is non-polar, non-polar, since there's no difference in, um, there's no like uh, maybe positively charged pole and negatively charged, negatively charged pole. So we say it's non-polar. And well, this isn't always the case. Sometimes what happens is we have maybe two atoms bonded together, which have a quite a significant difference in electronegativity. And what I'm going to do to uh, to represent this, what I'm going to do is move this hydrogen over so that we've actually got it in the periodic table, first of all. So it would be over here. And from this perspective, we can see now that there's a huge difference in electronegativity between hydrogen and the elements over here. So if we were to have maybe hydrogen and chlorine together, hydrogen and chlorine, so, I'll use gray to represent hydrogen and maybe green to represent chlorine so black bond no wait bond is white anyway uh so chlorine and so we've got hydrogen and uh chlorine and so what would happen is since so there's such a um significant difference in electronegativity uh, what, what will happen is there'll be an uh, uneven distribution of election, electron density. And what this means is that the bonding electrons, the ones in the two electrons involved in this bonding, are going to be uh, pulled closer towards the chlorine because cl since chlorine is more electronegative, it's going to be quite greedy with its electrons. And so we're going to have the electrons much closer to the chlorine. For this example, I'm, I'm just using red dots for the red for the dots, but well, it doesn't really matter that much. So yeah, as you can see, these uh, electrons are much closer to chlorine than hydrogen. And that the, the, the consequence of this difference in electronegativity due to the, I mean, this difference in, um, uh, I mean, the consequence of the uh, uneven distribution of charge is that this chlorine atom is going to have a slight negative charge because we can see these electrons are negative uh obviously electrons are negative so this chlorine atom is going to have a slight negative charge and hydrogen is uh slightly electron deficient because the electrons are the bonding electrons are closer to the uh the chlorine so hydrogen is slightly going to behave like a slightly positively ionized um atom even though it, there, there is still a bond present there, it's sort of a bordering on slightly, slightly more, more, more ionic, rather than being like covalent, more covalent like this. 
Anyway, so looking at the actual slight charges, what we use to represent slight charges is a Greek letter delta. And delta looks like this when it's lowercase. And this is the case we use for this particular kind of context. And what this delta means in like chemical terms is slightly, slightly. Uh, you, you might be familiar with delta, but just in case I'll go like over it. Like in maths, it means uh, something slightly different. Yeah, no pun intended. And um, so if I was to add a positive or negative symbol next to this de delta, so for plus, we would have delta plus, which means slightly positive, so slightly positive. And if we had delta minus, what we would, it would mean is slightly, slightly negative, slightly negative. And so what we can do is we can use these two symbols to represent the charges, the relative charges on these two uh, atoms in this bonding pair. So for the chlorine, it would be slightly negative, so slightly negative. And for the hydrogen, it's going to be slightly positive, so slightly positive. And so this is how we would represent the difference in charge in the molecules. And this uh, idea, this concept is going to come in quite handy when I when I go into um, intermolecular forces, because if we have this kind of molecule, if we were to have two of them, so if I was to maybe copy and paste this now, so copy this and paste it. So if I had one, another chlorine here, as you can see, uh, this chlorine here is slightly negative and this hydrogen is slightly positive. So there might be quite possibly a force between these two oppositely charged um, parts of these two molecules. And I'm not gonna go into that in this video, but yeah, I hope you guys found this video helpful and I'll see you guys in the next video, which is gonna be related to um, intermolecular forces.